Welcome back to Plague Size Studios, everyone. Ryan here with a topic that I've been mulling over for quite some time, and in kind of a good way, kind of a bad way. Uh, don't think this audience really needs to hear the message that I'll be bringing. I feel like we have a fairly mature viewer base, but nonetheless, I figured it'd be good to get the message out there because still like 80% of my views come from unsubscribed people. So um, I, I figure hopefully this will reach a larger audience. Today I'm gonna be talking about why I think competition in music is just utterly idiotic and damaging to, to basically everyone involved, especially in our little heavy metal arena. And I definitely wouldn't consider myself some moral authority that you should just outright trust everything I say. So I, I wanted to back it up with logic and actual you know, arguments instead of just saying, it's bad, be good to one another kind of thing. Our friend of the channel who lives halfway around the world, Mr. Leon Todd, already covered a bit of this in his video um, regarding the most important part of your guitar gear uh, which is your attitude, not 100% agree. And his point really boils down to don't be a dick to one another. We really can't afford it anymore, um, especially in the hard rock and heavy metal space. We just don't have the room for big egos and, and you know throat cutting practices uh, nowadays. And 100% agree with that. And I thought I would present kind of a, uh, a logical side to this as well. I think it's important to lead this discussion with why competition spawns in the first place where it manifests and why I think it's ultimately counterintuitive in a creative space like music. Um, so to do so, let's start with something simple like milk. Um, everyone generally drinks it. Um, and you, when you go get it, you go to the refrigerator that has three or four different brands. And once you pick whether you want, you know, skim milk or 2% or whatever, you're going to zero in on one kind. Uh, unless you're doing something with a special you know, ingredients or something like that, you're gonna pick the same one practically every time. One brand, one type, whether it be based on loyalty or price, you're gonna get that one. And that's where competition really makes sense because um, ignoring that a lot of those different brands come from the same supplier, um, you are ultimately in competition for the same market. One person is not gonna buy six different brands of milk. Um, they're gonna go and they're gonna get the one product they need, and that's it. Um, if one person buys that, that is a lost sale for something else. That's the nature of commodities, something that we consume and we throw away and we need every day. Um, you're not gonna buy a roll of paper towels from one brand and then the other one as well. And in that instance, if say you're the off brand and someone buys a name brand of the same product, you can pretty much consider that a lost sale. Um, if they don't buy yours, they have to buy someone else's if they are, are in the market for that particular product. And that spawns direct competition. You have someone that is ultimately trying to take away your business. The consequences of that reality are definitely mixed, whether you are the end consumer or just an investor in the company, but that's just kind of the name of the game when it you know, comes to something that is so consumable, something you go through so quickly, um, and something that spawns a lot of brand loyalty and um, one-time use type of situation. And in that case, although it's not always a good thing, competition does make logical sense. So let's talk about something a little less straightforward. So most of you are probably at least somewhat familiar with the intense rivalry between, say, the Xbox and PlayStation brands. And these are two video game platforms that are ultimately vying for a very similar, if not the exact same, audience. Um, every generation, they've always ran games and had very similar features within margin of error of each other. One of them will always usurp the other in some different um, spaces, but ultimately they're trying to get the same group of people to, uh, to purchase the platform. If we only lived in a world with multi-platform video game publishers, say with Ubisoft with Assassin's Creed or EA with Battlefield, both of these franchises you could grab a copy on either console and play fairly similarly to one another, then this kind of would be just the milk example all over again. You're going to pick one and you know roll with it, whether you've been a fan of that one for a while or it's just a better proposition value based on some other features. But it's not that simple. Each console does have its pros and cons, as I've said before. Some of them have games the other one doesn't have. Um, some of them have peripherals like the PlayStation VR that you can get on the PlayStation platform. Um, some of them have services that may appeal more to different audiences. And the crux of the whole argument when it comes to competition is that even though they are vying for the same market, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a zero sum situation. When I say zero sum, I'm referring to that assumption of a sale for your competitor is a lost sale for you, and you can't both make a sale to the same person at the same time. And that's just not the case with video games. A lot of the times it is, 
because ultimately people have limited funds. Um, you're not most of the time going to buy your 12 year old kid both consoles on, you know, on Christmas day. Um, but if someone can afford both and they want both for the differences between them, however slight they are, you can do that. And a lot of people do do that. For me personally, bring in even more outlier cases. I play on PC, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch because they all have different use cases for me. I enjoy having a relatively high powered handheld on the go with the Nintendo Switch, but being able to have the option to dock it when I'm at home. I've always loved a lot of the Xbox exclusive franchises growing up. And I like the all out power flexibility of the PC and obviously being able to produce videos and make music and the kind of stuff that I'm doing right now. So they all are, you know, kind of in competition with one another, but they do things differently enough that they can all coexist under the same household. And it's the exact same situation with music. Even taking an extreme case like Metallica versus Megadeth, who had some of the most intense rivalries during the 1980s and early 90s, there is no reason that the end consumer of their music can't enjoy both. And I definitely enjoy both. They were two of my favorite bands um, growing up and are huge influences on me personally. They um, are very similar. Obviously, Mustaine used to be in Metallica, so there's a lot of influence um, that he left on that band, as well as crafting their early music, and they have very similar influences themselves. Um, but they're just different enough. They, they you know, check different tick boxes. So for me, that was always a situation where I wondered why people even treated it as a choice to begin with. Uh, why does it have to be one or the other for an end consumer of the music? Uh, we were never involved in the personal history that could make someone despise another ex-member of a band. You know, why should we give a shit about um, that in the end artistic product? I won't pretend this is a situation without constraints. Um, a lot of the things in our milk example do carry over to this scenario, like everyone has limited money. It's not as big of a deal nowadays with music, considering that with streaming platforms, you can get a lot of music for a pretty darn good value. Um, and most people are still illegally distributing music regardless of that anyway. Um, but especially say 25, 30 years ago, the cost of a cassette tape could be like half or a whole days of pay if you were a minimum wage worker. And that was very significant. So you had to choose if you're going to buy an album, which one it's going to be. Um, and of course, you still swap with friends and, and burn CDs later on and that kind of stuff. But still, that, that was an important consideration. But um, it's still, that's a short term thing. Just because you got the Black Album from Metallica doesn't mean you couldn't get Rust in Peace a few months down the road once you saved up for it. Um, so there was some competition there and I'm sure there was resulted in some you know losses here and there. But your music would get heard at some point. My personal biggest constraint is time, hands down. And I think it is for a lot of people when it comes to discovering new music. Um, I listen to a lot of new stuff coming home from work. I feel I'm too tired and unattentive in the morning to listen to music, so I don't. Um, a lot of times if I'm at home, I'm watching videos, if I'm doing you know, cooking or doing weather stuff, or I'm playing guitar and doing this kind of stuff. Um, so I just feel like I don't have as much time to discover new music in, in the ways that I used to. And that's what you really have to stand out as an artist um, and compete on that level to, uh, to get heard. At the end of the day though, I feel we live in an environment with such open channels for music distribution that if it's worthwhile, it's well made and um, you get it out there in the correct way, it will be successful. And it really boils down to being in competition with oneself. And I think that's a point that I'm going to return to a lot in this video. And I make all these points with the example of two very similar bands under the same subgenre of metal with almost identical origin stories. So you better believe that I think that this point applies across the board, especially in other genres. Um, and some people would say, well, yeah, if there was no Metallica, Megadeth would have been more successful. And that's possible, but I still think the end result would have been the same. I highly doubt that even if Metallica had miraculously broke up in 1984, that Megadeth would have put out a 16X Platinum album the year that Black Album came out. I just don't think that competition, even when you could say it's competition, is that strict when we're talking about creative environments. The sentiment that I keep seeing creeping up over the years though is one that I can sympathize with for sure, is why is someone like Katy Perry who's making millions and millions of dollars on auto-tuned corporate shill music, um, you know, why are they so much more successful than someone who's truly talented and artistic like Tosin Abasi? It's just not fair. And 
I would agree, yes, I wish Tosin made as much money as Katy Perry. I wish he made 10 times more for as much talent that guy has and um, how much inspiration he's given to a whole generation of guitarists. But the sad reality is it wouldn't have mattered if we didn't have a Katy Perry, if we didn't have any of these pop artists. Pop and hip hop artists getting hundreds of millions of views on YouTube is not taking away from any potential views that Tosin would have gotten. Um, it's just separate entities altogether. Do I think that more people would be interested in what I consider to be objectively better music if that wasn't drowning it out? Sure, um, in the same way that I think Megadeth would have been a little bit more successful if Metallica had miraculously disappeared in the early 80s. But I don't think it's such to an extent that it would be flip-flop. Um, I just think it, we're, we're talking about a limited market here and that's why I think we can't afford to be shitty to one another. The sad reality of it is just most people are not that passionate about music. They're going to take whatever is accessible to them, whatever's easy to get into, whatever they grew up on in their formative years, and that's pretty much the end of their search. Um, yet another reason why a sale for Toby Keith is not a lost sale for Katy Perry or a lost sale for Animals as Leaders. And another reason why I think competition is so stupid when we're talking about um, especially between different musical styles because there was never any competition to begin with. It's like trying to market a child's vitamin pill to an 85 year old man. There's no chance to begin with that he's gonna buy that product. It's not for him. So there's no competition in that space. This last area is where a lot of passion tends to flare in this discussion of competition and that's with player skill, whether we're talking about drum players or guitar players, vocalists, whatever. Um, and I think we're kind of in a fortunate position with heavy metal nowadays because a lot of people's idols, a lot of um, the prominent players really are just humble, down-to-earth dudes, it seems like, in terms when, of their interviews and um, in, you know, instructional videos and that kind of stuff, which um, I think is a very good influence on some of the younger people getting into, the, into music in general. But that doesn't mean that there aren't cocky assholes out there, especially with um, you know, bands starting out. And there's always going to be that sense of I, I am directly competing with someone because we're trying to play the same gig at the same bar or whatever. Um, and I'll fall back on Leon's sentiments once again here. It just, it doesn't pay. It does not pay to be a shitty person to someone else in this small arena. If you're the best player in the room, awesome. Celebrate it even, but just don't be a jackass, you know? Use that as motivation to be even better. Use that as motivation to teach people, to you know, build others up, not put them down. Um, and if you are intimidated by the best player in the room, you know, turn that around. Have it be your inspiration to get better. And once again, this boils down to competition with oneself. That's what's constructive, to try to build yourself up and not put other people down. Look to the modern content creators who have made this whole thing kind of their career, um, like Rob Chapman and Rob Scallon and Ola England, Keith Marrow. I think these guys fall on a pretty big spectrum of playing ability and obviously playing styles, but they're all very humble and cool to each other and um, to their audiences and fans. And I think that's ultimately what makes someone successful nowadays. Yeah, you could be an asshole 30 years ago because it was all about the radio, but now everything is so personal. Um, and honestly, it, it does affect me. As much as I try to separate the art from the artist, I do like hearing someone's well-composed album and knowing that it's someone doing it for the passion of the project and knowing that they're a decent human being at the same time. And at the end of all of this, isn't it just more fun when you don't have all that negative bullshit weighing you down to begin with? Isn't it a better experience to, especially if you get to do this live and make a little bit of money uh, on it, just go on stage and be able to share your music with people and then be able to you know, sing it back to you um, than worrying about if the guy across the street made $100 more than you did on that gig. It's just, it gets you nowhere, except depression and anxiety, I think. And don't confuse this argument with you have to like everything. That's not what I'm saying at all. There's plenty of stuff that I don't personally like um, that my friends like, but we can also agree on a lot of things that um, other bands and other music that we come together on. And that's the important part. It's the important part of not caring if someone else is more successful than your favorite band because you like them. That's what matters. It's why if someone like John Petrucci, I have huge respect for that guy. He's very um, humble in the guitar scene, incredibly talented player, but 
I think I don't like as many Dream Theater albums as I do like. Crucify Me, I know, a <laughs> progressive metal player saying that. Um, love some of the earlier stuff, but that's why that I don't care that even though I very much disliked The Astonishing, um, that it outsold probably 10 to 1 compared to what Devin Townsend's latest album does, because it just doesn't matter, because competition is just fucking stupid <laughs> in music. And I think I'll leave it at that. So. Um, if you have any follow-up comments, do leave them below. I'm sure this one's going to be an interesting one. Um, other than that, like Bill and Ted said, be excellent to each other. That's, that's what matters. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next Heavy Reflection. Bye.